Milk steaming. How does it work? How do we get that beautifully textured milk that we can pour amazing patterns with on our fancy coffee? It seems so hard, it's really not. I will show you how to do it, I will show you. Perfectly textured milk is an amazing thing. Before we get started on technique, let's talk about what perfectly textured milk is and what it isn't. Properly steamed milk is this little matrix that's made up of just millions and millions of tiny, tiny little bubbles that people like to call microphone. Even though we're after this little bubble structure, in properly textured milk, you shouldn't be able to see any visible bubbles. The surface of the milk should be shiny and glossy and have the appearance of wet paint. It should pour really evenly and smoothly and it should be hard to tell where the foam ends and where the liquid begins. Properly textured milk should not be grainy, it should not have any big visible bubbles on it, and it should also not be so thin that if you take a spoon and peel back that top layer of foam, you get to liquid right away. It should be plush. Plush people. This magical texture is created by two things. One is aeration, the introduction of air into the milk. Some people call this stretching the milk. If you've ever been at a coffee shop and heard that quintessential cafe sound, that's the stretch, that's aeration. That's air being pumped into the milk. This creates the bubbles. Now if you put in too much air, if you stretch too long or too intensely or just go too hard in the paint, you're either gonna get big bubbles or just way too much foam. Your lattes will look really fuzzy, they'll look really clumpy, it just, it's not gonna be beautiful. On the flip side, if you don't aerate enough, if you don't stretch enough, you're not gonna have enough texture to create those beautiful patterns, but more importantly, you're not gonna get that silky, beautiful, coating, ridiculously awesome mouthfeel. I'm not trying to pay someone just to make my milk hot. I can do that in the microwave, okay? Now the stretch, the aeration, that dude, he doesn't work alone. He's got a partner in crime, and his partner in crime is the vortex. The vortex, the whirlpool, whatever you wanna call it. Some people call it the roll. It's the motion that the milk is making in the pitcher while you're steaming it. And it should resemble a whirlpool. It should be spinning around and around and around and around. Now the vortex's job is to take the air, take those bubbles that you've created by aerating the milk, and whip them out and evenly distribute them throughout the body of the milk. This is what's gonna make the milk really smooth, really pourable, really creamy, and it's gonna keep it from separating too quickly. Again, the milk should pour as one. It should seem like one thing, even though it's really textured milk and liquid milk together. Even if you do put the right amount of air into it, if you don't have that vortex, you're gonna have a really big separation between those layers. There's gonna be no blending, it's gonna be tricky to pour, and even though you've got the right amount of air, the texture is just not gonna be as smooth as it otherwise would have been if you had that vortex going on. Now heat plays a role too, but we're gonna talk about that later. He's, he's gonna come into play later. Getting the right amount of air, getting the vortex is really simple. It all starts with proper positioning. Now before you do anything, you're gonna wanna purge the steam wand. Always purge the steam wand before and after you steam milk, every time. To keep things clean, you should purge into the drip tray or into a towel that's wrapped around the end of the steam wand. Keep that station clean. Don't be purging your steam wand all over the counter, shooting water out everywhere. It just creates a mess. You're gonna end up with this soupy soup kitchen thing. It's not gonna be good. When you're positioning your pitcher on your steam wand, you wanna check off a few boxes before you get going. The first is the angle that your steam wand's at. You wanna keep the wand fairly vertical. You don't want the wand to flare out too high. You don't want to put it in any weird positions. Just don't get, we don't make it weird. Now when we put the pitcher on the steam wand, you want to position the pitcher so that the steam wand is about a third of the way off the side of the pitcher. This is important because this is going to help get that vortex going. If you slam the steam wand up against the side of the pitcher or if you leave the steam wand directly in the center of the pitcher, the vortex isn't going to be as consistent and predictable. The height and angle of the pitcher are important too. You see the tip of that steam wand right there, you want about half to two thirds of that underneath the surface of the milk and the rest of the steam wand exposed. This is important because it's gonna allow you to turn on that steam wand and get suction right away. Having the pitcher at a little bit of an angle helps with the vortex too. A good way to cheat is to rest the steam wand in the spout of the pitcher. Just lean the pitcher back, lock the steam wand in the spout, make sure it's still about a third of the way off the side and you are good to go. Now not only does this help create consistent vortex, it helps stabilize the pitcher as well. So when you're working on bar, you need to move around a lot, you're kind of doing 10 things at once, this will help keep that pitcher really, really still, which will help you get more amazing milk. Roll call. Neutral steam wand, steam wand about a third of the way off the side of the pitcher, steam wand rested in the spout of the pitcher, about half to two thirds of that steam wand tip buried, we are good to go. Here's what I want you to do. Get set up in that position, take a deep 
breath, turn the steam wand on. Just crank it. Don't give it a soft little quarter of a turn, I'm scared kind of turn. Crank that thing on. You should see and hear a couple things. One, you should hear that stretch. You should hear that air being forced into the milk. And you should also see that vortex start to kick in. The milk should immediately start spinning around and around. If you've got your setup proper and the milk's not steaming right away, you need to turn the steam wand on harder. Just crank it up a little bit. Don't be afraid. Now, unfortunately, this is where a lot of people get tripped up. It's really exciting, it's really intense, it's kind of nerve wracking. You turn that steam wand on and you move. A lot of people get spooked by that aeration sound and they immediately move the pitcher up. This is a problem because if you move the pitcher up, you're gonna kill that introduction of air, you're not gonna get enough air in there. Less common but still happens sometimes is people move the pitcher down or away from the steam wand. This results in the opposite thing happening. You're gonna get way too much air in there, it's gonna be out of control, and even if you do have a strong vortex, there's no way you're gonna be able to whip it all in evenly. The purpose of getting set up so perfect in the first place with so much intentionality is gonna allow you to turn the steam on on and not have to move the pitcher at all. If you don't nail the setup perfectly, you're gonna have to make some adjustments. If you turn the steam on on and don't hear any air going in, you don't hear that suction sound, you're gonna need to slowly lower the pitcher until you do start to hear that sound. If you turn the steam wand on and hear this huge, aggressive, raging waters rush of suction, you're gonna need to move the pitcher up really quickly to kill that aeration before it becomes out of hand. Now a lot of people are taught to bury the steam wand in the milk, turn the steam wand on, and then slowly lower the pitcher until they start to hear that suction and then go from there. Now while this technically does work, it's actually really bad advice. We want the suction as close to the beginning of milk steaming as possible because that gives our vortex the most time to whip it out and is gonna give us the creamiest texture. By starting off buried and having to find the point at which the suction starts, that moves that little suction package and gives us less time to integrate that and get that texture all buttery. Okay, so you're steaming milk. There's a lot of things going on at once. Now what happens next is maybe the hardest to describe. You've got your whirlpool going, you've got your stretch happening, and at some point you need to cut off the introduction of air. How do you know when to do this? It just takes a lot of listening and a little bit of practice. In my experience, a lot of people intuitively know when there's too much air going on. They have this feeling that, you know what? I'm gonna stop this stretch right now. Again, you're looking for that smooth, consistent draw of air, not overly aggressive, not just a little pitter patter of air. Here's what the perfect stretch should sound like. See that? You see that little move? You see that move? So when your brain tells you, hey, we're done with the air here, we got all we need, let's kill this thing. All you wanna do is move your pitcher straight up just enough to kill the introduction of any more excess air. Now this is where a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of people do one of two things. One, they move up way too far. Instead of just moving up enough to stop that introduction of air, they fully bury the steam wand all the way to the bottom of the pitcher. The second thing people do is they don't move straight up. They kind of rotate the pitcher a little bit or shift the direction as they're moving up. Now, both of these things are bad because they disturb the vortex too much. The more we mess with this vortex, the more tension we create there, the less creamy, the less glossy and shiny our milk is gonna be. Indications that you're moving too much when you're trying to kill that introduction of air or your milk suddenly start to jump up and down or the vortex starting to stall or twist almost in the opposite direction. So we got set up perfectly, we turned our steam on on, we saw the vortex working, we heard that sound, we decided when enough was enough for the air, we moved the pitcher up perfectly vertically, just a little bit to kill the introduction of air, and here we are. Now we're just waiting. We're waiting for temperature, we're waiting for that tactile feedback for the pitcher and the milk to tell us, hey, I'm hot enough. I'm ready to drink. If you're gauging your milk by hand, it should feel good to tap and hold for a couple seconds. This is gonna be right around 155 degrees. If your pitcher's too hot to even tap for a second or so, your milk is way too hot. And you're probably hearing this sound that's associated with really hot milk. It's almost like this roaring, rumbling, king of the milk jungle sound. 
And you might be seeing some bubbles start to form and some texture going into your milk even though you're not adding any air to it. Science is happening. You've just gone too far. Your milk is too hot. Kill it, get rid of it, throw that away, start over. On the flip side, if you can hold your pitcher by the bottom for any length of time and it doesn't start to feel uncomfortable at all, your milk's probably a little bit under temperature. And when the milk's under temperature, it tends to taste a little flat. It brings down that perception of sweetness. It should be noted that whatever temperature your guests want their beverage at is the correct temperature. Some people like it extra hot. Some people don't like it as hot. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Make your guests happy. So once you get that tactile feedback from your pitcher and you're at the right temperature, turn that steam wand off right away. You don't want any dead time in between feeling that end temperature and turning the steam wand off. Especially in small pitchers with small volumes of milk, Things are progressing at a really, really fast rate. Even a second or two is gonna have you way off the mark in terms of temperature, you're gonna be way hot. After you turn the steam wand off, lower that pitcher down, wipe your steam on, and purge it again. I know you already purged it before, purge it again. And don't skip the wiping step, please. Full circle recap, purge the steam wand, Get the pitcher on the steam wand. You want the steam wand about a third of the way off the side of the pitcher. Rest the steam wand in the spout of the pitcher for bonus points. The tip of that steam wand, you want about half to two thirds of it underneath the surface of the milk. Everything else should be out in the open air. Once you're dialed in in this position, turn the steam wand on. You should see and hear a couple things. You should see that vortex going around and around. You should hear air being drawn into the milk. At this point, you should focus on being as absolutely still as you can be. If you don't hear any air, slowly lower the pitcher until you find air. If you hear way too much air come in, raise the pitcher up until that goes away. And if you did either of those two things, reassess your starting position next time you did it wrong. You're seeing the vortex, you're feeling for temperature, you're hearing the air. Once your brain tells you, hey, we've got enough stretch, move that pitcher up just enough to kill their introduction of any excess air and not disturb the vortex. Once the pitcher becomes a little too uncomfortable to touch for more than a second or two at a time, turn that steam wand off, pull the pitcher off the steam wand, purge and wipe the steam wand, boom! The key to the whole process is less is more here. The more you move, the more unnecessary motions you make, the more you have the potential to negatively influence the quality of the milk. Whenever I'm troubleshooting milk from experienced baristas who've gone through all the training and they're still having milk texture issues, it's almost always too much unnecessary motion or they're not taking the time to have that proper setup before they start steaming. Go slow and steady, build in the right patterns, mind all the steps, check off all the boxes, do it consistently, and you'll be steaming perfect milk in no time. That's milk steaming, let me know how it goes. Stay docked, and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.